following program is brought to you by friends and partners of Spirit of Faith Family Church and J. Eberly Ministries. Let me tell you a little bit about what a fence really is. The Greek word means to st- cause to stumble. It's the word for the, the bait on a mouse trap. You know, that mouse is not going into that trap because he wants to die. He's going into that trap because that there's cheese on that, that little, what do you call that trigger thing? There's cheese on that, and that smells good. We're going to two references. We're going to Psalm 119, and then we're going also to the book of Acts, the 24th chapter. Psalm 119 and Acts 24. First of all, in Psalms. We're going to read Psalm 119, verse 165. Great peace have they which love thy law, and nothing shall offend them. Amen. What he's telling us here is that one of the keys to walking, amongst other things, he's telling us one of the keys to walking in The peace of God is to learn to not be offended or not take offense. Tell your neighbor, I think this is good for us this morning. (laughs) Hallelujah. Great peace. The Amplified, I believe, says this, if I remember correctly, but I do know the Greek brings out, not the Greek, the Hebrew, brings out that the word peace means wholeness. Great wholeness in every area of life have they that love thy law, and nothing shall offend them. Offense is an open door for the devil to rob us of what God has provided for us, including our soundness of mind, our wholeness, and uh, even spiritually, mentally, physically, emotionally, um, uh, all these areas. Uh, God wants us to be whole. Tell your neighbor, God has a plan, and it's for you to be whole. Amen. So he's talking about that. And I just sensed in my spirit, just, it's been, you notice this week, uh, this month we have that series as the uh, series of the month, I believe, the fence, the trap of Satan. Back, I, I, I picked those usually a month or two, I think about a month in advance. I had this come up in my spirit, but it just came been stuck in there, stuck in there ever since that I mentioned to Michelle to make that one the book of the, or her CD of the month. But, um, but we're going to uh, do a little tune-up on this this morning and uh, talk about it. I don't know how many of you are listening to the series, but uh, you're going to listen to it this morning because I'm going to teach on it. <laughs> Amen. We're going to do a tune-up. <clears throat> we're going to pull into the shop. We're going to get the t- car up on the rack, and we're going to say, okay, let's examine here. We've got, we got some things maybe that we need to examine and find out how we're doing on this. This is one of Satan's favorite devices. I, I've, I've been in the ministry for get going on 25 years now. And one of Satan's devices, I think this is one of his favorite ones. I know it must be because he uses it all the time. And one of the, one of the reasons it's his favorite is because it works so much. It shouldn't work so much in the body of Christ, but it does. And the thing we've got to do is learn to not take offense when it comes. Because Satan can't make you do anything. He can bring it, but he can't make you latch on to it and be offended. Amen. Amen. Remember, first, uh, the Bible says in uh, 2, Chronicles, 2 Corinthians uh, 2, 11, it, it says that we're not ignorant of Satan's devices. We're not ignorant of Satan's devices. So if we go into the uh, device ignorant of what his device is, we're going dis- to be at the disadvantage. So let's get the advantage a little bit sharper this morning. Amen. 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 Praise the Lord. You got in for me? No, I, I had this come up in my spirit about a month ago. So anything that happened today or last week or anything, I'm not. <laughs> Amen. How many of you know it's smart to be prepared ahead of time and not be kind of hit with sideways and be taken out with unsuspecting devices that we weren't thinking about at the time? Amen. So we want to have the advantage, and in order to have the advantage, we've got to be not ignorant. Amen. Remember Jesus talked about in Luke, uh, I mean in Matthew 7, he talked about building a house and getting the foundation laid before the storm came. It's important what you do before these attacks come, because you, be, uh, 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 you will have the opportunity to be offended. 
Well, I'm just believing I won't. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Well, then you're saying something against what Jesus said. Jesus said in Luke 17, 1, I believe it is, he said, in, he said it's impossible, but that offenses will come. Right. One translation says it's inevitable. <laughs> it's just, you just can't go through this life without the opportunity. And some are grand opportunities to take offense. Maybe because somebody did, did you wrong. How many of you know wrongs are done? There are many injustices in this world. Many things aren't right, aren't the way they should be. Don't misunderstand me at all. But this because things aren't right doesn't mean you have to go around all hurt and, and beat up and offended about it, wounded and angry, hard-hearted and unforgiving, giving place to the devil. I'm just going to go ahead and preach and then I'm out of here. <clears throat> Pastor Debbie, Debbie and I are going on a little trip tomorrow. We're going to have a good time. <laughs> Hallelujah. We're going to a little trip. <clears throat> she already knows about it. She just forgot. Anyway. Great peace. Great peace. I mean, peace is... Uh, it's something that I'm holding dearer, and that's not a good English word, but more dear and more dear. Oh, forget it. Dearer and dearer. I just said. <laughs> I do better when I'm not trying to be just correcting all my English, you know. <laughs> Hallelujah. So, uh, it'll, it'll steal your peace. That's what he's talking about. It'll steal you the peace in your mind. You know, you're always thinking about how somebody did you wrong. Or there are injustices in the world and people do things wrong against us, all of us. But not everything that we think somebody did us wrong about did they actually do us wrong. Some things are just perceived offenses. Well, they didn't think of me right. Well, why is it all always about you? Praise the Lord. I should have wore armor this morning, I think. <laughs> Let me tell you a little bit about what offense really is. The Greek word means to, to cause to stumble. It's the word for the, the bait on a mouse trap. You know, that mouse is not going into that trap because he wants to die. He's going into that trap because that there's cheese on that, that little, what do you call that, trigger thing. There's cheese on that, and that smells good. It, it appeals to him. And let me just tell you this. Offense appeals to the flesh. Or we would never go into it and never get trapped in it. Because it does trap us. Amen. I mean, that big old hammer is going to come down across the back of our neck. You know what I'm talking about? Somebody said, well, not me. Well, then you're against the word. The Bible tells you that's what's going to happen. Amen. Hit you real good over the head. Amen. Pop your eyeballs out. You ever seen that? <laughs> I am in rare form today. I just... When we grew up, we always liked those ones when we caught the mouse in his eye. Anyway. Anyway, some of you city folks are still getting, so, so praise the Lord. I got to keep you excited because this might hurt a little bit. Amen. So nothing shall offend them. Jesus said, remember, I think it's Luke 17, 1, it's impossible, but that offenses will come. In other words, you can't go through this life without an opportunity to be offended, whether it's real or perceived. It's just, and, and probably there's going to be somebody that does you wrong, and it's not perceived, it's just. You just can't hardly go through life without that. But notice here he said, uh, Great peace have they that love thy law, and nothing shall offend them. So being that he said it's impossible to not have the opportunity to be offended, that doesn't mean that you can't go through life without taking, I like to say, grabbing hold of the offense. You know what I mean? Um, some of us, and I, I say us, all of us, uh, there's a number of us, including myself, that... You know, there was things that we picked up growing up in our homes 
And some homes were just, they, they were world champion of offender. They grab onto a fence. I mean, they started in, they, they started, you know, sucking on the bottle that had a fence in the bottle. I mean, it was some of our families. I mean, we were suckled on it. Then we went to elementary school and got our education in it. Then went to junior high and high school and got a high school degree in it. And then we went on to college. We got a college degree on it. Now we're majoring on it in life. And people are handing us doctorates on it, you know, because, boy, you're good at that. Let's just give you a doctorate on it. <laughs> Amen. As some of you know, I like the outdoors, and there's, in the, in the bush, out in the woods, there's certain little briars that, there's these things called cockerbirds, for example. I mean, you, if you don't have the right kind of clothing on, you're going to come out of there with all these burrs all over you. Amen. And that's the way some people are. I mean, they can't hardly walk past three. They, they're within three miles of an offense, and that thing will just boom, you know. It's a bad spiritual habit. If nobody's offending you, you find somebody else that's offended, and you join up with them. Oh, it's terrible how they treated you. Oh, you should, you should get even. You should do. Except here comes that big trap, punk, you know. Look at your neighbor and see if their eyes are bugged out yet. <laughs> Amen. So, we've got to learn not to take the offense. Here, he said, we can actually live where nothing offends us. Tell your neighbor, poke him real hard and say, that's my goal. That's my goal. To never be offended again. <laughs> never, 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 ever, ever. Never. That can't be done. That's my goal. Have we all been there? No. <laughs> Just yesterday, I started getting some reports on, okay, well, they said you don't have to do the sprinkler system, but you got to do this now and this now and that. And I started, it started coming on me. How many of you know what I'm talking about? <laughs> well, who do they think they are? <laughs> uh oh, it ain't worth it. Listen, I, it ain't worth it today. I'm having a good day. It ain't worth it today. That's my goal, not to be offended. That's our, it ought to be our goal, and it is possible because Jesus here, the Bible here said, nothing shall offend them. Talk about my mama. <laughs> talk about anything. You talk about me, smear my, mud, my name in the mud, ruin my reputation. Nothing. What do you do? Well, you just turn your case over to God and say, God, that, you'll take care of me. That's what Jesus did. He was falsely accused, and he appealed to the higher court of heaven. Hallelujah. All right, Acts 24. <laughs> it's good you're laughing. Helps the medicine. Go down. <clears throat> Acts 24, let's look at what Paul said here. Now, Paul had been beaten, left for dead. People made vows to kill him before they wouldn't eat until he was dead, you know. <clears throat> they beat him and chased him from city to city and did all kinds of things to him. If there's anybody that had an opportunity to be offended, it was Paul. But notice what he said here. Notice in the 24th chapter of Acts, the 16th verse, it says, And herein do I exercise myself to have always a conscience void of offense towards God and towards men. Oh, nobody would get offended at God, would they? I mean, multitudes of people offended at God. They think he's done them wrong. But he, the Bible says he's the righteous judge of all the earth. He won't pervert justice for one single person. God's not doing you wrong. Amen. Well, how's come God won't promote me? Well, maybe that little attitude is the reason. Acts 24, 16, herein do I exercise myself to have always a conscience void of offense. I have to, Paul, here's not what he's saying. Exercise means to work, doesn't it? You can't go down to the gym and say, I come here for muscles. <laughs> okay, come on over here. Take your payment. Now come on over here. Lay down on this bench. Push that bar, pick that up, push it away from you and do that 14 times, 15 times, whatever. 
No, no, I don't want to do that. I just wanted muscles. I don't want to sweat. I don't want to work. I don't want to, you know. It doesn't work that way, does it? Paul said that to not take an offense is going to take work. You're going to have to push it away and not just once. Matt here, he works out. Some of you guys work out. And do you just do it once, one rep, one rep every day? Okay, I did it one day. No, he does it over and over and over again. Somebody say, we know this. I know, me too, but I got to keep reminding myself of it. Yeah, I mean, it is going to keep on coming. And sometimes there's people in our lives through which, through which, God, there's things keep on coming through them. Amen. And so you have to keep pushing the offense away. Pushing, they, 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 they keep on irritating you. <laughs> Amen. Keep on doing things that bother you. The point that you're hurting your feelings. Getting all angry about it. Unforgiveness and ill will toward them and all that. And so you've got to keep on pushing all those things away. No, I'm not going to take the offense. I'm not going to take the offense. Amen. So he said, I have to work at this. And you'll have to work at it. If you, if you and I are going to have a life that we don't take offense, it's going to take work. This isn't for the spiritually lazy. Amen. Praise God. So that means strenuous effort. Now, it has appeal to your flesh. That, that mouse, it takes work for that mouse. Don't go over there. Don't go over there. That, it takes work. Because it has appeal. That cheese smells so good. I've watched them. You, know, you can see the little nose. They know daddy just got dead. He just got killed, but, you know. Isn't that right? It's hard to resist. And that's the way the flesh is. Oh, 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 oh I want that. I want that. I want to get it mad. I want to get irritated. I want to, I want to get an unforgiveness. I want to, here's one. I want to be hurt. Well, people hurt people, don't they? People do things, but it's a choice. It's a decision to take the hurt. If you look up in the English dictionary, which uh, uh, I did, I looked up in the English dictionary what it means to, uh, to be offended. It means to, hurt, to, to offend means to hurt or cause pain. But really what that's describing is the thing that somebody else has done to us. That's really not what offense is. Yes, they have done something against us, but really it's a choice now whether we're going to take that offense. There's a difference between somebody violating you and me and you and I, uh, or, or and doing us wrong, or you, and there's something different between that and us taking the offense. And I'm telling you what, it can be, it can be like those cockburs in your when you walk through the woods. I mean, you get those things off and they're sticking to your fingers and it can be like that. You, you, it, it is work to get that off of you. Isn't that right? So really what offense is, is that which causes a person to stumble. It's a trap. The, the, real, uh, the real offense is the cheese, not the actual spring that comes down. That's the result. The offense was what attracted the person, or the mouse, or we're talking, using as an illustration as a person, attracted them into the trap. Yeah, yeah. The cheese was the offense. Uh, and the, the thing that the devil wants to do is he wants to, yes, he wants to hurt people, but he also wants to draw them into the trap. You understand? And in doing that, he has put us in a jailhouse, so to speak. Amen. Just because somebody does you wrong doesn't mean you have to stumble over it and stop what, making progress in your life spiritually. Amen. Now, here's, here's what it means in studying it all out in the Greek and in different Bible verses. I can kind of give you a, a capsule de definition. To take, uh, taking offense means being, it's a combination of several things, being irritated by the wrong that was done, and then you're irritated to the point of your feelings being hurt. And then you get angry about it and get into strife and unforgiveness in your heart. It's a combination of all those things put together. Did you, did you hear that? I'll say that again. Um, it's a combination of being irritated by the wrong that is done to the point of being hurt in your feelings, then getting angry about it, then getting into strife and unforgiveness. 
I'll just give you the rest of it. It leads to separation. Every time. That's the result of, un that's the result of offense. Every single time. It leads to separation, and it is rooted in pride. What do you mean rooted in pride? Well, if you study pride carefully, pride is all about me. How, how you did me, what, what, I, what I didn't get from you. you. You should have done me this. You shouldn't or you should have thought of me. Where's all that coming from? Why is me, me, me the one we're thinking of all the time? Pride. You'll be much happier in life just getting you off the mind. Well, thank you for your enthusiasm. <laughs> Forget about you. Well, I don't know why that didn't go over quite like I thought it would go over. I guess we're thinking about it. Hallelujah. So, <laughs> tell your neighbor, you'll be much happier getting you off your mind. You know what I mean? How people treat me, you know, what I want out of this. How about getting your life... Getting, getting engrossed in being a blessing, getting, helping somebody else, and sowing into somebody's life. And I was thinking on coming to church this morning. I was thinking, man, I just love going to church for several reasons. I just love the fellowship of the saints. I love the Word of God. I love, I love obeying God and what He's told me to do. But I just love helping people. That's just life to me. That's just... <laughs> Amen. All right, so the thing we've got to recognize, it always leads to separation, and we'll get into that in a little bit, all right? But offense can be manifested in anger, or it can be manifested in silent seething. It can be manifested in the silent treatment. Sitting over there, not saying anything. What's wrong? Nothing. Nothing. Nothing's wrong. Oh, come on, something's wrong. Leave me alone. I'm fine. I'm going to be all right. You're not fine. It's not going to be all right. It's... <laughs> Amen. Praise the Lord. Now, it all, like I said, it always leads to separation. It'll separate you from God's Word. Remember, great peace have they that love thy law, and nothing shall offend them. In other words, if you love the Word of God enough, you'll decide, I'm not going to take the offense because that's going to separate me from the Word. I don't want to get I love the Word too much. It's my help. It's my answer. It'll separate you, from the, separate you from the anointing of the Holy Spirit manifesting in your life. It'll separate you from God's people, the uh, uh, relationships that God brought to bless your life. And listen, God never leads through offense. Well, I just feel led. Well, I noticed you weren't led until you took the offense. Out of the job or out of the marriage or out of the whatever church family or whatever it is. Boy, I'll tell you, I think we needed this worse than I thought. <laughs> he never leads by offense. Now, there's a lot of people that'll tell you they're being led. But you really, have you ever figured out people can tell you one thing and that's not really what's going on? Have you figured that out yet? <laughs> Amen. <laughs> a lot of people aren't paying attention to the voices they're listening to. They don't recognize the voice of offense whenever they're listening to it. They think it's the Holy Spirit leading them. Well, I, I found out that it's, uh, it's uh, I've noticed, I've, I've been in ministry for 25, close to 25 years, and I've noticed some, I've learned a few things. One thing is, is before that offense came, they just loved everybody. They wouldn't have thought about leaving. Then the offense came, and they felt like God was leading them, and then if somehow or another you got them through that, and they got past the offense, they don't want to leave anymore whether it's their marriage or whatever it is. I'm preaching better than your amen. And they don't recognize. Now, now, some of them will just swear up and down almost, you know, I'm God's leading us, not recognizing the voice they're listening to. There are different voices in the world, many voices in the world, and they all got a path that's going to lead you down. Amen. So learn to recognize it. Here's one way to recognize it. If it's really God leading you, you can do it without the, the validation from somebody else that you have to share the offense that somebody did you wrong. I just want you to know why we're leaving and, you know. Well, if it was God, you're big enough to do it without sharing it with somebody else. Amen. 
It needs the validation of somebody else to, oh, isn't that terrible how they treated you? Thank you for your enthusiasm. Hallelujah. Now, offense breaks the connection to the Word and to, the, to those God wants to use in your life. Offense destroys unity. If there's nothing happening in your life in an area, it's possible that you've gotten offended at God or someone in that area. You need to check that out. Check that out. Jesus in his own hometown there could do no mighty work. Isn't that right? Not Mark 6. He could there do no mighty work. I don't want there to be uh, 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 my house. I want there to be somewhere else. You know, let's read that text one more time that we used, Acts 24, 16. Herein do I exercise myself to have always a conscience void of offense towards God and towards men. You know, one of the exercises of faith we use to get rid of offense is to not take thoughts of offense. A thought coming to us doesn't equal us taking it. Well, we can use our faith to resist thoughts whenever they come. One of the things we want to learn to do is cast down the imaginations that the enemy brings to our mind. Well, to do that, we must become skilled and be schooled in that. My announcer's coming to give you information about a product that will help you develop in that skill. In Jesus' name. Stay tuned. Pastor Jay will be right back with a few closing comments. Offense is one of Satan's favorite weapons against your spiritual growth. In today's timely series, Offense, the Trap of Satan, Pastor Jay Eberly explores the pitfalls and traps of taking offense. And even more importantly, he sheds light on learning a new habit, not taking offense when it comes. For $20, you'll receive today's offer and learn the key to not taking Satan's trap of offense. To order, visit us at www.soffc.org. I want to encourage you to go on our website and look at all the products we have available. You can also watch these broadcasts over and over again. They're archived there for your benefit. You know, we need to be fed the Word of God along this line. The Bible tells us in Psalms, our text in our broadcast today, it said, Great peace have they which love thy law, and nothing shall offend them. Let's exercise ourselves in that this week and be sure and not take offense. We're going to see you again next week. We're going to be talking more about these things. We're going to be talking about how in Jesus' own hometown, he could there do no mighty work because they were offended at him. Well, we don't want our house to be a place where Jesus can't do what he wants to do. Amen. So we look forward to seeing you next week. We'll be talking more about these same truths. Until then, I believe you're going to live a victorious life in Christ. Faith and honor for the things of God will guard our thought life. But then offense, it changes gatekeepers. Now, instead of only letting in things that come from God, it actually blocks things that come in from God and only allows in anything in line with criticism, offense, bad-mouthing people. Amen. And replaces the gatekeeper. <clears throat> Amen. And, and God's blessings won't be allowed in. I want to invite you to like us on Facebook at Eberly Ministries where you can learn about current events, new product offers, and daily quotes. You'll be blessed. The preceding program was brought to you by friends and partners of Spirit of Faith Family Church and J. Eberly Ministries.